It's really really hard for you to get a dead M1 CPU But today we will show you how you can end up having one And along the way we will discuss 7 cases of dead logic boards from the M series Mac And we will briefly investigate cause of their death Then let's find out if we can fix all of them So the first one will be this unfortunate beautiful 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro Well that's a double Pro that cannot be turned on at all So the sad story this customer told us that he just bought this used machine from Facebook marketplace for $1700 But when the Apple warranty period just ended the MacBook decided to die in sleep without any sign or warning And since we're not getting any response right now We will try to open up the bottom case and see if there's any water traces in Side. But first, we must put on the nitrile glove to look more professional Well, you know, cause we're not And begin to unscrew 8 pentalobe screws at the sides of the bottom case Then gently pull and slide it out to reveal the internal components of the MacBook So let's zoom in a little bit and you should see the keyboard and battery connector LCD ports, left and right chicken wing looks pretty good and clean Except these little smudges on the fan by the previous technician So maybe it's quite safe to plug in the USB-C charger now and it seems that the 5 volt stuck with 0.02 amps and not boosting to 20 volt like it usually does So let's proceed to the next step by taking the multimeter to measure the voltage around the logic board So take the black probe and put it to any ground shield and then the red probe to any test points you want to measure By using the FlexBV board viewer by Paul Daniels You can start to locate the PPDC in always on charger on the logic board and measure it because that's where the voltage from the USB-C charger will go so obviously we're getting the same 5 volt coming directly from the SBC charger now let's move on to the next critical power rail and that is pp3v8 always on so you can see we're getting a flat 0 volt that's supposed to be 3.8 volt always on even though you shut down this MacBook so it's clearly something wrong here and if we try to measure the next critical power rail that is pp bus always on it's no surprise that we're also getting the same 0 volt and since pp bus is the classic Apple power rail that can easily fail we're just gonna do a quick diode measurement to the PP bus but first, you have to remove the USB-C charger and take off the battery's SMBus flex cable then switch the multimeter to diode mode and put the red probe to any ground pin and of course the black probe to the PP bus test points So of course, dead short to ground as always PP bus is so, there are many ways to find the dead short location on this logic board and this time we will be using this special tool that's going to speed up a lot of troubleshooting process so we will begin to unbox it now This is a thermal camera by Infiray P2 Pro and we will demonstrate how it functions and it will help you to quickly find and locate any source of heat coming from the logic board so let's tear it down further and see what's inside So this is the main thermal camera unit and it's really impressive to see the size of this camera just about the size of my thumb And as you can see here, it has a USB-C connector that was specifically designed for Android phones And for the moment, it is not compatible with the latest iPhone 15 with USB-C port Next, you can see another accessory on the right side And we believe this is the macro lens that allows you to bring the camera really close to the subject And if you want to use it, you can just attach the lens to the camera unit and the built-in magnet will hold them together so now let's take our cheap android smartphone into the scene because you know you're not gonna buy iphones for admin stuff and things like that then install the p2 pro app from the play store and try to install the thermal camera into usb-c port and when you see the thermal camera is working good it is time to go back to the logic board Next, we will set up the power supply unit and take the black crocodile clip and clip it to any ground pin And then we're gonna put any metal tweezers to the red clip So you can set up the thermal camera on the smartphone And you can begin to inject the voltage to the dead shorted PP bus always on with the tweezers So we're going to move the camera around to see if anything gets unusually hot And there you go 
it seems like you're having a hot fried chicken wing on the right side. But as you zoom in a little bit to the hot spot, you can see most of the components are no stuff on the top side. So most probably the heat is coming from the bottom side of the logic board. Then it seems that we don't have any choice but to begin disassemble the logic board from the chassis, then organize each individual metal shields together with their screws into a separate compartment of the medicine pill box. And the simple reason why we're taking time sorting them out is simply because you don't want to mess them up especially when you are working with hundreds of MacBooks. When you organize them like this, you can easily pass this MacBook from one person doing the initial QC inspection to the repair technician and next to the final QC inspection and lastly to the customer service. And ultimately your customer will never lose a single screw through the whole process. So the logic board's finally out by lifting the left chicken wing first and let's put the chassis aside for now then flip the logic board to the bottom side and go ahead to the right chicken wing where the red bright spot was. So you can see several components are present here and we will try to inject the voltage to the shorted PP bus again then we're gonna see which components is getting hot. So it's quite obvious right? Something is getting hot right there, but you still cannot pinpoint which component is the culprit. So this is where the macro lens will be handy as you can just attach it to the thermal camera unit but you need to bring the camera really close to the subject and you should see vividly which component is putting out the heat. By referring to the FlexBV board viewer, that component is a 10 microfarad ceramic capacitor for speaker amp circuit. You can even tell from the explosion sign right beside the capacitor. So now we're just going to remove this capacitor using the hot air gun, then try to remeasure the PP bus diode value to see if it's still shorted to ground. 0.4 means the short is gone, so we can just proceed to the next step by replacing the 10 microfarad capacitor. But sometimes it can be quite challenging to find donor for this modern capacitor with the same specifications and voltage. So the easiest and fastest way to do this is to take the donor capacitor from the same generation logic board. Then we will go ahead and transplant the speaker amps capacitor to our target logic board. Next, we will plug the USB-C charger really quick just to see if it's still stuck to 5V or maybe it's gonna boost to 20V. And we're getting 20V now, so I think everything should be good. Now we will partially reassemble the logic board into the chassis and tighten just one or two screws for final QC inspection just in case something else is not working and you need to open it again. Don't forget the battery screw, then plug in the charger and you should see it successfully turns on. We will pass this MacBook to another person for final QC inspection now and he will finalize the other screws and shields later on. So that was quite an easy fix and it usually happens a lot because of this low lifespan capacitor. Another great example of the same thing happens to the second case next. This is an M2 13-inch MacBook Pro 2022 logic board and when you try to plug in the USB-C charger, it also stuck to the same 5 volt with 0 0.0 amps. So let's cut it short, shall we? When you take the multimeter and measure voltage around the logic board, PP bus is present with fluctuating 12.3 volt, but this time we're missing PP 3V3 S2 voltage. Since we start to suspect something's wrong here, take off the charger and measure the diode value of that specific power rail. Red probe to ground and black probe to test point gives you a dead shot on ground again when it's supposed to be around 0.3. So let's set up the same crocodile clip and tweezers from the power supply unit and try to inject voltage to PP3V3S2 while monitoring source of heat around the logic board. So this point is getting hard because of point of injection so it's not what we are looking for but if you look closely, something is heating up from the bottom side. Then we're just gonna flip the logic board and try to inject PP3V3S2 again. And here we go. A single component right beside the Wi-Fi chip is burning hot right now. So when you zoom into the Wi-Fi IC area, you can tell from visual inspection that a tiny ceramic capacitor looks bad. So we're just going to remove it under the microscope. And now you can see how wasted this tiny capacitor is with a crack through its surface. Next, don't forget to remove the black epoxy around the components that could cause you unwanted problems that we're going to replace the faulty capacitor with the donor of the same value and specifications. Clean it with Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol, then we're going to measure the diode value once again real quick and we're getting a good 0.3 diode value. Then let's try to plug in the USB-C charger to see if it's boosting to 20V. 
and we're good to go. Then all that you need is partially reassemble the logic board into the chassis as the rest of screws and shields will be installed in the final QC process by another inspector. And here we have a good working M2 MacBook again. Next. The third case happens to this M1 MacBook Air where we found a dead shot to ground on the PP Bus 3v3 S2 V in. Well, if you look that up, it's connected to the PP Bus always on, so technically they're the same power rail with different names. So without further ado, we're going to set up the high end injection protocol tools, then begin to show off enormous voltage to the dead shot PP Bus. So this high tech camera simply shows you which component is putting out the thermal energy, and that is the tantalum poly capacitor. Yeah, capacitor again. But by looking at appearance, you will never expect this thing is faulty or blown. So we will begin to remove it using the hot air gun and replace it with the same capacitance value and specification from the donor. And this mysteriously missing ceramic capacitor will also be replaced free of charge. Then as usual, we will quickly check the diode value to make sure it's not shorted anymore and that is 0.45. If you try to measure the diode value of the poly tantalum capacitor, then it is expected for us to get a dead short 0.0, .0 when its value supposed to be OL. Now it should be quite safe to plug in the USB-C charger now. And yes, it is now boosting to 20 volts, so everything should work fine. Next, partially reassemble the logic board into the chassis and try to turn it on, then we can pass this MacBook to the final QC department to make sure every other hardwares are working good. The fourth case is also the M1 MacBook Air, and the logic board looks really really clean without any sign of explosion, but when we measure the diode values around the logic board using the multimeter, we actually found dead shot to ground on the signal PP3V8 always on. Next, set up your injection tools and take the thermal camera then begin to inject voltage on the inductor where the shot to ground is. So it seems that the power management unit or PMU is getting hot at the first glance but since the heat pattern looks a little bit scattered and more localized on the logic board, maybe it is worth for us to look again at the other side of the logic board. So as we try to inject it again, we finally found the actual culprit that is located really just under the PMU but on the other side. And by looking of the thermal image of the Infiray P2 Pro, you can easily tell it's the capacitor C81DC that caused this issue. We hope this logic board will work again after replacing this dead capacitor. Just a quick comparison, if you are using a different thermal camera brand like Sig Thermal Compact Pro, it's a little bit old but still can do the job as you can see which area is getting hot when you try to inject the voltage. However, we personally think it still cannot precisely pinpoint which component is shorted and getting hot just like how the Infiray P2 Pro flawlessly did. Now we're just gonna go ahead and replace the shorted ceramic capacitor under the microscope and you have to make sure the value and specifications are the same. After replacing the dead capacitor, the diode value now returns to normal value with 0.3. Next. We will clean the old thermal paste from the heatsink and apply a new one to the M1 CPU, tighten the screws on both of the heatsink leaf spring and partially reassemble everything into the chassis again and try to turn it on. There you have it working again. We will now pass this MacBook to final QC department to finalize everything. So now you must be thinking, oh these guys are making easy money by changing one single component. Well you know what? We purposely put all the easy PZ one first so you would think everything is easy until it's not. So the next one or the fifth case is a lot more complicated as this M1 MacBook Air logic board has a tiny explosion on one of the PMU. PMU stands for Power Management Unit, S letter here stands for Slave PMU and M for Master PMU. This SPMU is responsible mostly for powering the NAND storage so you'd better be hope it's not killing any of the NANDs or else your data are completely gone. As we begin to diagnose the explosion area, it's quite puzzling at first because we don't find any shot to ground and this probe point we're measuring here is PP3V8 always on and it's really near the explosion site. And it seems like this tiny inductor is also busted 
So we've measured the SPMU BSTLQLX, I'm not sure what that means, and it's also not shorted to ground. So if you think of it really carefully, when something explodes, the cause of it must be really near. So we've decided to poke and measure the surrounding pins of SPMU and finally found this troublesome PP5V BSTLQV out SPMU that's a long name. But you can only find the test points on the other side of the logic board, so you need to turn it around and look for the points you can measure. As we try to measure diode value on this power rail, it's no surprise that we're getting a dead shot to ground with 0 0.004. So you might be able to guess that we will try to inject voltage to see if anything gets really hot. Then let's take our tweezers and carefully inject voltage to the shorted rail and see what's going on. I think it's quite obvious to see that one of the component on that specific rail is getting hot and we just want to test our sick thermal camera now for comparison but unfortunately it just gives you one bright spot and thus you cannot pinpoint which capacitor is dead. Then by looking at inferior thermal image and referring to board view, that is the C7800, another ceramic capacitor that gets us in trouble. So you must be thinking that replacing this one tiny capacitor will solve the problem, right? You're wrong. So we're just gonna go ahead under the microscope and try to replace the capacitor first and see if it solves the problem. So we're going to remove it now using the hot air gun. This is the one causing you so much problem and you can almost never tell without any specialized equipment and you can barely see the crack on its surface. Now we are replacing it with the donor of the same specifications. Then we will try to check if it's still shorted to ground and no, the shot is gone so we will try to plug in the USB-C charger and bad news it is stuck to 5V and not boosting at all. It seems that we don't have any choice but to replace the SPMU in order for this logic board to work again. After desoldering the SPMU off using the hot air gun, you need to remove all the lead free solder balls using the solder wick and clean it with alcohol. Then you need to find a good working SPMU from other working logic board or maybe donor or iCloud locked logic board. So no, this kind of repair will not gonna be cheap because Apple simply won't sell this proprietary IC to you so you can only scavenge them from other working system. Now take the good SPMU from the 13 inch MacBook Pro and remove the lead free solder and reball it with the solder paste and stencil. And only then you can align it to the target logic board and solder it with hot air gun. And you know what? This tiny inductor also looks wasted so we will just replace it to save our time. So everything looks good after replacing the components. Now moment of the truth. Plugging in the charger gives you... 20 volt. That's great! Let us reassemble everything again from the thermal paste, hitsing screws, chassis screws and try to turn it on. And there you have it working again. We will pass this MacBook for final QC inspection for sure. The next one, the sixth case is this unfortunate 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro 2020. This logic board suffered liquid damage and causes critical areas to be affected. So what really happens when you accidentally spill water or liquid through the air vents, then it will usually drop to this buck converter area for generating 33 volt for PP3V3S2. And if you don't familiar with this IC, it functions to take the 12 volt PP bus as an input and step it down to 33 volt as an output. So if you are unfortunate enough and spill conductive liquid directly on top of this IC, you will create a short circuit and the 12 volt PP bus will be really happy to go downstream to the other side then kill all the 3v3 components because of over voltage. As the raging PP bus begins the killing frenzy, it mercilessly blows up UP900 IC and thus creating another short circuit and let the PP bus continue the rampage then kill all the components connecting to PP1v25S2. And surprise mother father, here we have the glorious M1 SoC connecting to the PP1V25S2. So, as you might have expected... So right now we have a dead shot to ground on the PP1V25 and if we try to inject voltage to that rail, you can see the M1 silicon wafer is getting hot on one specific spot at the corner. So this is the end for all of your data and this logic board is considered a no fix. 
the 7th case is another great example for that M1 CPU issue on this Mac Mini 2020. Don't you ever try to do this at home if you don't know what you're doing. This Mac cannot be turned on at all and it doesn't have any traces of liquid damage so everything is clean and pristine. As we plug in the power cord into the PSU and observe the heat pattern, you can see something is continuously pulsing on the logic board. And that pulsing source of heat is coming from the master PMU responsible for powering the M1 SoC. Then, as we direct the camera to the M1 SoC, you can observe unusual heat coming from the RAM package. This kind of heat pattern is really weird and might be caused by a shorted M1 wafer or maybe shorted LPDDR4X RAM. To compare it with a good working M1 Mac Mini, here's how the heat pattern should look like under normal condition. You should see faint red from the main M1 package and the rest of the logic board almost look like not dissipating any heat at all including the master PMU. So finally, we have concluded that the M1 SoC package is faulty and not worth replacing considering the second-hand value for this model is not that expensive. Unless you want to take the extra mile and try to replace the M1 SoC like what we did for the M1 MacBook Air. So, to sum up the video, 5 of the MacBooks just won't turn on because of a dead capacitor. Then, one MacBook suffers dead M1 CPU because of water damage and it's the user's fault. And finally, one Mac Mini suffers dead M1 CPU for no reason. And you have to perform all the steps we did before assuming you have a dead NAND or maybe a dead CPU or even corrupted iBoot firmware. We can pretty much say 6 of the dead logic board cases are caused by manufacturing defect and it's not even your fault when those components died and you're just using it normally as a user. However, it's not the end of the world yet as long as you send it to the right repair shop. And thanks to this Infiray P2 Pro thermal camera, we are able to locate these dead short components almost instantly and precisely. So if you are interested to get one for yourself, you can apply the discount code attached to the link in the description video. Well, unless you want to stay traditional, then play the hot touch and burn oh. game. After using this camera for about 6 months, the only cons we have for now is the P2 Pro mobile app can be a little buggy if you want to remove the camera for a while and when you try plugging it again while the app is open, sometimes it will not read the camera. You need to force shut the app and relaunch again and only then it works. Well, it's just minor thing and they could be working for a fix in the future. And if you intend to use the camera with the extension cable and connect it to the laptop or anything, unfortunately there is no software from the Infiray just yet but you can use other software like TC View in Windows 10. However, the function is still limited and not native. So to end this video, we want to say thank you to iRay Technology Company Limited for providing this thermal camera for us to review and I hope you folks gain some knowledge from this video and see you again at iBoff RCC channel, reverse engineering at its best. Have a nice day and thanks for watching.